The next topic we want to briefly discuss is differentiation. This is a major part of calculus. Now this course is not what I would call exactly a mathematical course, but throughout the course we will certainly need the language of mathematics and from time to time even to carry out some mathematical type procedures. Differentiation is one of them and it kind of goes like this. So let f be a nice function. What do we mean by nice? Well by nice I just mean very simply that it's smooth in some sense. It might be a straight line or it might be a smooth curve. Okay, something like that. Maybe we won't consider functions of this type yet. This is certainly piecewise continuous, but you can see that there's a jump here when x, that is, this is the x-axis, when x is here, there's a jump. And perhaps we won't consider functions for the time being that look like this. Let's suppose that, in fact, f is some sort of smooth function. Okay, All right, You can think of this d as a little delta means change in. And this d is a little delta, meaning change in. So what this is short for is the change in divided by the change in x. Okay, And so if you apply this to this thing, then all this is essentially saying is, oh, it's the change in this thing over the change in this. Okay, It basically gives you the instantaneous slope at the point x. So if this is the function f, and suppose x takes on a value, I don't know, say, maybe right here. If this much right here is h, meaning then that this location would be x plus h, then the change in that function over that interval of length h is this much, right? This much. And so what is that change? Uh, I can measure that as, oh, it's f of x plus h minus f of x, right, will give me that distance. Oh, that's exactly what this is, f of x plus h minus f of x. Now if I divide that by the distance here, h, oh, okay, that's it, that's rise over run. That's the change in y over the change in x, okay, which gives me the slope of a line that passes right through those two points. But what happens if we let h get really, really small? Okay, as h goes to zero, then this point moves to the left, and this gap is going to get smaller and smaller. And so what happens then is that in the limit, as h goes to zero, this quantity becomes the slope of the tangent line right here at x. Okay, It's sort of the, the instantaneous rate of change of the function f at this point. Okay, it's slope. Okay, um, I could do that for any point on this curve. I could find the derivative here. It should make sense to you, hopefully, that for nice smooth functions like this, it, it shouldn't matter if I start from the right, you know, approach this way, or if I were to, say, take this limit and approach from the left. I should still get the same instantaneous rate of change. Now, where this will start to break down is when the functions are not quite so nice. Probably won't have to deal with that in this course, but just so you know, a function like this, this is differentiable, okay, but not here. It's not differentiable there. No derivative exists. As you approach from the right, it's it has a slope, you know, the slope is constant, so the derivative is, is going to be constant here to the right of this point. And as you approach from the left, that the, the derivative is also constant, okay? Um, but it's different, right? The slope of this portion is constant, but it's negative. And the slope over here is positive. It's not differentiable at this point, okay? We say that it's differentiable if the derivative as you approach from the right is the same as the derivative as you approach from the left. Another way this concept can sort of break down is if you have a point of discontinuity, something like this maybe. Again, we have another piecewise continuous function here. As you approach this location, this x value from the right, the derivative, it, it looks sort of more or less constant. When you take this limit, um, you would get something positive. Looks to be like, you know, provided this much is 1 and this much is 1, 0, 0. This looks like the slope would be approximately 1. It's the slope of a line that goes this way. Okay. However, if you were to approach from the left, you get something different. That is, if I took the limit of, say, as h goes down to 0 of, say, f of x, 
minus f of x minus h over x minus x minus h. Well, this this just evaluates to h in the bottom. So this this much is this distance there is h. Here is f of x. Here is f of x minus h. So in the limit, I'm getting the slope right here at that point, but coming from the left. So that slope is going to be more like, you know, negative something. But again, for our purposes throughout this course, our functions will be pretty nice and, and we'll assume, unless otherwise stated, that the derivative exists. Now one application of particular interest is when you have a function that you would like to maximize. That is, maybe you have some function f, and maybe f represents revenue or something, something that you'd like to maximize. And then uh, maybe somehow it's some function of some variable you can control called x. If x is here, then our function is not at its maximum. If x is here, our function is not at its maximum. If f is over here, our function is not at its ma maximum. So what I'd like to do in this case is find that value of x right here, find that value of x such that f achieves its maximum. You can do that by taking the derivative. And here's how. All you got to do is, you know, if, if it turns out you can find an expression, a mathematical expression for this, so that you have the derivative of this function at every, every x, what might that look like in this case? Well, again, so let's suppose that this is 1, this is 1, this is 0, this is 0. The slope here is approximately positive 1, but then when x is here, it's a little bit less, and when x is here, it's a little bit less, and when x is here, it's 0. Okay, so, you know, maybe the derivative function, it's a function also, looks something like this. Okay, so here's that derivative. What do you notice about that? That derivative equals 0 right there where x achieves the maximum. So yeah, so what you can do then is if you can find a nice mathematical expression for the derivative, this function and set that equal to zero and then solve this this is an equation solve this expression for x at that point will maximize that function a similar case if you want to minimize a function of course for example if you have a function that goes like this and you would like to minimize something like cost okay you would like to find this value of x such that that function takes on its minimum value